Hey guys, this is Marius from TradeMate and today we're going to do a video where we talk a bit about variance and how you can reduce it using TradeMate. So in its uh, simplest sense, variance is the difference between the results that we're getting and what we're expecting to get. So let's take an example. Well, we have a group of nine people who are of different heights. Some of them are very small, some of them are very tall. So the variance basically calculates the uh, deviation from the average height in the population. So as we can see in the formula, it takes in uh, each data point and it compares it to the average and then it takes into the overall number of people in our sample. So if there's a very large difference between the, um, the smallest persons and the, the tallest persons, then we're going to get a large variance. Now, also, in the formula for variance, it is worth to note that the values are squared. Thus, it weights outliers more heavily than data near the mean. This is done to avoid that values uh, that are below and above the mean cancel each other out. So as a result, the unit of measurement of the variance is different to the unit of measurement for the mean. So in order uh, to adjust for this, we take the root of the variance, aka the standard deviation, to return the data to the same unit of measurement and thus making it easier to compare our deviations to our original data. So that covers the difference between variance and standard deviation. Another interesting element to touch upon with regards to standard deviation is the 68.95.99.7 rule of thumbs. So basically what this says is that if you have a normal distribution of data, then you can expect 68% of this data to be within one standard deviation from the mean. You can expect 95% of your data to be within two standard deviations. And we'll also at a later point have a look at what this looks like inside the trade mate with regards to your closing edge. Next, we'll have a look at the law of large numbers and the short versus the long term. Now, let's assume that your sample size is the bets that you have placed and the population is the overall trade mate community. So, the law of large numbers states that if you get a large enough sample size, the mean of your sample size is going to converge to the true mean of the population, uh, or in other words, the, uh, the expected value. So this is a great video by Saul Khan of Red Count Academy explaining the law of large numbers, and I do recommend you checking that out if you're unfamiliar with it from before. Now, what you can see here in the example that he's been using, he's been, uh, been calculating um, the outcomes of a coin flip. So if you have a uh, hundred coins within a box, you know, you have 50% probability of a coin being uh, tails or heads. So if you shake the box and then you count the number of, uh, of tails and uh, you repeat it and you count the number of tails, for instance, you get 55 tails the first time, 65 the second, 45, and etc. So after a given number of uh, of trials, you know, you could uh, be up here in having uh, a larger number of, um, of tails uh, than what you would expect, which is 50. So, but over time, this will converge towards the mean, which is 50, since the probability is the same of it being uh, either heads or tails. Let's run to a couple of examples uh, from TradeMate. In the first example, we have a guy who's uh, only placed five trades and he's lost all of them. So obviously five trades is a very small sample size and in such a small sample size, you know, anything can happen. You can win five in a row, you can lose five in a row. Next, let's have a look at my stats using TradeMate. So, so far I got uh, in 630 trades, so it's still in the, the small range with regards to sample size. But what we can see here is a graph showing the true closing outs versus my theoretical hit rate. So, for instance, if I place a bet on a game in which um, the odds is, is two of, let's say, Arsenal winning home against the West Ham this weekend, that means that 
it's a 50% uh, probability of Arsenal winning if the odds is equal to 2. So what you can see is that I placed 91 trades in the odds range of 2 and my theoretical hit rate should be 50% but my current hit rate is 60% uh, so I've been running well above what's expected. Now what I can expect to happen as my number of trades increases is that these values in the, in the different odds ranges will converge towards their theoretical hit rate. So in the range of 1.5, my theoretical hit rate is 66.7, my current hit rate is 70.8%, so I can expect that the hit rate that I currently have will converge towards my theoretical hit rate. So what's also worth to note is that for high outsers, let's say 10 in odds, uh, you can only expect it to go in one out of every 10 times you place the bet. So for the variance even out on the higher odds ranges, it's just going to take a lot more time, a lot more trades uh, for you to see the variance even out. Over time, what you should expect to see is that your flat ROI per bet should be equal to your average closing edge. Now, obviously, I've been uh, running well above my expected closing edge so far. So what I can expect over time is just as in the case in, um, in the video here in the law of large numbers is that uh, my profits are going to converge um, towards my average closing edge. However, our actual profits might be larger than our flat ROI uh, thanks to our bet sizing. So in the last video, we talked about how you can use the Kelly criterion to determine your optimal stake size for maximizing profit growth. Now, by following the Kelly, we will place larger stakes on high edges and low outsers compared to lower stakes on high outsers with low edges. So the result would be that our actual ROI is higher than our flat ROI. So what you can see here is that my average ROI is at 14.1% while my flat ROI is at 10.8%. So by using um, the Kelly criterion, my profits are 3.1% higher per bet than if I'd been using flat stakes. So we talked about the 68, 95 and 99.7% rule, right? So what we can see in TradeMed is that you have um, a thing called your closing edge standard deviation and mine is at 6.8. So what does this mean? What I could expect is that 68% of my closing edges lie between minus 3.8% and 9.8% while 95% of my closing edges lies between negative 10.6% and 16.6%. If it is not the case that our average ROI is larger than our flat ROI, if it's the opposite that our flat ROI is higher, it indicates that a lot of our larger bets have not gone in, while some of our smaller bets at smaller stakes and higher odds have gone in. So for instance, I could be running really bad on these odds ranges, but be running really good on these ones. How can I reduce my variance? There are several steps you can take to reduce your variance using TradeMate. You can place on lower odds, for instance, odds ranges below three. You can see here your average odds placed and the average true closing odds that you're getting. By reducing this number, you should expect to see uh, less variance. You can place bets that are closer to kickoff. You can see here that my average time to kickoff is two hours, especially for in the Asian markets. Uh, sub one hour is optimal. You can also place on a higher edge percentage. You can only place one bet per game because if you have multiple bets on on the same game, for instance, you bet both the over 208, 209, and 210 on the basketball game, then if those fail, you know you're going. You can expect to see a large downswing. And finally, you can adjust your Kelly criteria. So we recommend using a 30 to 50% Kelly and depending on how many bets you have open at the same time. The more amount of bets you have open at the same time, the lower your Kelly should be.
final question, which is a difficult one to answer, is when can I expect my variance to even out? Basically, once you see that your bubbles are converging towards your theoretical hit rate, that's when your variance has evened out. So it's, it's very difficult to predict when this is going to occur. However, Martin and Reese last week did a stream where they looked at the data from the entire TradeMate community. So what this image shows is the odds range below 2.5 and what we can see here is that our actual profits has converged towards our average closing edge. Now this is a sample size of about 7,900 bets and as you can see it's, it's pretty much spot on. I would recommend you to watch this video in its entirety as Martin and Reese goes through the, the trade made data, different presets different sports and different odds ranges and times before kickoff to figure out what are the different optimal presets. So to sum it up, you can take several steps to reduce the variance. You can place on lower odds, you can place on bets closer to kickoff, you can place on higher edge percentages, e.g. from at least 1% and up, you can only place one bet per game, and you can use a 30% Kelly if you're placing a lot of open bets.